moments like these, I think we need a steady cam. We're on the bloody beat, off the beaten track here, we're out in the sticks. We thought we'd get all motivated and come and pick the ladies up because it was bloody miserable and showery rain. And we're so we travelled out here, and it's like a bit earlier than we probably should have come here. And so anyway, the bloody sun's come back out, and it's all nice and warm again. You're gonna hate spring, don't you? But we'll see what's going on. We might have to leave one box out here to pick up the stragglers. Yeah, anyway, at least the, at least the cameraman will be happy because the light won't be so shit like it normally is. Oh, I'm just having a laugh to myself. I put the indicators on and turned down this bloody... We're in the middle of nowhere. I'm thinking to myself, fuck half the time I don't put the indicators on when I'm in the town. Never mind, here I am indicating to nobody. <laughs> Maybe the kangaroos were checking me out. Look at that, I think they actually... Look at this, I think they actually remember us from yesterday. I think we might go and get our suits on somewhere else. Oh shit, now I'm spitting on the camera. It was bloody cold when we left home. Anyway, we've driven out of here in the middle of bloody nowhere and we've got here and the girls are all awake because the silly bloody sun came back out. So we don't know what to do. See, back in the day, if you were smoking cigarettes, you could sit here and do that. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to sit here and discuss the whys and wherefores. Hey, we could listen to a podcast, couldn't we? We could listen to something on the, on the, on the podcast thing. That's me talking without cameras. Oh, maybe we should start a podcast. I wonder what that would be about. Random concepts of a rambling 50-year-old man lost in his own mind. Whew. Could be a problem. Well, I think this move might be fun. The ladies are already trying to sting us before we even get near them. They're like sending out kamikaze attacks. So if we don't get stung to death, we'll see you in episode 98. <laughs> see if I can do like the other night, pulled it off and blah, blah, blah. Oh, just to let you know too. Oh, I'm so bloody well organized. I've lost one of my bolts already. So I'm down to a of a recycled long bolt. <laughs> ah, I made the hole slightly bigger so it's a bit more, it's a bit more bush bee man friendly now. <laughs> I was just thinking, since we've got a bit of cow shit laying around here, one of my mates suggested that we, that some people put cow shit and horse shit and whatever else and pine well he recommended pine needles but some people use shit and i'm thinking these bees are such a shit we might put some shit in our smoker because that'll sort of suit them uh. i think these girls are so terribly annoying we'll put some shit in there what do you reckon I wonder if burning shit smells like shit. <laughs> it might have been a shitty idea. Might have been a real shit idea, actually, mightn't it? Wonder <laughs> if they crumble the shit up instead of great big lumps. <laughs> that smell like shit. <laughs> That's a bit. <laughs> I think we've done the shit thing wrong, there's not much smoke. <laughs> I think we might we might go back to the old school.
Morning, morning. We've got the little lady safe and sound to the next destination. You know the cool thing about beekeeping? If you've never got up at sunrise, or as the sun's rising, and listening to the birds, it's bloody cool fun. They're beautiful little creatures all saying, hello, hello, where the bloody hell is everybody? So all the, all the birds and the bees, as they would say, because the bees in the boxes are all going, what the fuck was that? <laughs> I can't know what the hell. And then when they get out of their box, they're going to go, I don't think these pine trees were here yesterday, were they? Because these are the spits we're making. So we want to try to make them in some semblance of order. <laughs> but I plan to while we're here is to change for all of the eights, out of the eights into the tens, so then we've got a uniformed, at least a uniform package of each. So at least all the eights would be together. That's the size boxes, if you're not up to speed with me terminology. My mad plan was if we had them sort of on a bit of an angle facing into the sun then they'd all get the morning sun on the front of their box. But that's easier said than done stacking stuff crookedly straight. <laughs> so I'm just going to re-box this one because it's got, it's actually reasonably solid but the, it's got no legs so stacking it's a pain in the ass. So I'm just going to put the girls in here and then I'm just going to do those eight frame boxes into some other boxes because if you remember we didn't have the right size out there in the scrub so it's a retrofit here, <laughs> back at home. Everybody's going to get really a rude awakening in a minute. They thought they'd had a blooming rough morning of it already. <laughs> Poor little darlings. They've probably got a bit of an ant attack over there, up there where they've been. And some nasty bullets that used to turn up after dark. There's a little bit of honey on board, which is good. Put that over there. I don't think I'd like my house pulled apart. I reckon it'd be a bit of a ruffians, wouldn't it? Mm. Your big fat bellies. Your big fat bellies going on. Being out there on the canola having a nibble. <laughs> Very nice. A little bit of fresh comb, a bit of fresh brood there, which is good. You won't fuck around too long because we don't want them to get too cold. And there's the little lady. Here she is having a little bit of a run around. This should give them a bit nicer box to live in now. Because this box is a little bit naughty because it's got no clearance on the bottom. So, I don't know if you can see that, but the way they designed this, there's absolutely no clearance for the, no bee space at the bottom. So if you're making your own bee boxes, Remember to leave a little bit of room so the ladies can run in. I inherited this box and it's whoever put it together, in my opinion, only in my opinion, so out there in bee land if you do this, I'm sorry, but normally you want a bit of bee space at the bottom of your box. So when you go to the shop or online these days, so when you order your box, you're um, going to get your normal frame box, tens or eights or whatever they are. This is a full depth box. Doesn't really matter full depth, whatever it is. But anyway, full depth is normally for a new, for the um, 
brood box anyway. But what they've got done here is you've got your box and they've got a beautiful base. They should have put some legs on it, would have been helpful for stacking the bastard. That's why I got the shits with it. But anyway, and then they've just put the actual box straight to the base. And then they've cut a hole, cut a hole in their box so they can get an entrance, which doesn't give you any bee space at the bottom. So the better idea is when you buy your box and you make your base, whatever base you want to make. I like the wooden bases, I reckon they're cool. They're um, probably a bit more user friendly for the girls. You want to get a bit of 10 mil, 10 mil wood and run along between your base and your box. And then when you come around the front, you have a little bit along the front of either side. And then that gives you your opening and also gives you a bee space on the bottom of your box. So the girls can run in under the frames and work up in, and that's a bit easier for them. And it gives uh, them a real chance to get a hold of the moths or whatever else bugs that are trying to annoy the shit out of them. So just keep that in mind. If you're at home and you're making up your bee boxes, or if you're just starting out, <laughs> you know, just remember to leave a bit of bee space at the bottom of your box. It'll, the girls will love you for it. So this is a diff this is what I was trying to talk about. This has actually got a tin base, which is not necessarily popular with everybody, but yeah, I don't think it's such a big problem, but uh, it's better with a wooden base if you've got something that's waterproof, I think it's better. But anyway, as again, I've inherited these tin bottom boxes and the girls are already in there, so I'm replacing them as I go. But this is what I wanted to tell, show you. So this is your normal full depth box, full depth super box, or gonna, this is the brood box, but it's the full depth box. And then they've run this little bit of wood. This is your little bit of 10 mil at the bottom of the box, between that and the base. And then that creates your door. Now, if you want to get real excited, you can actually design it so that you can make this wider or narrower, which is kind of a very good idea. So you can actually take some of that out. So you know, you have a little screw in there and you can pull out an extra section or put it back in for winter. But yeah, so if you're making boxes, just remember to get a little bit of bead. Just save the ladies a lot of heartache. I was just noticing, I forgot to mention too, when they've put the legs on, which is a good idea to get it off the ground a little bit, you put these little legs, it makes it easier to stack and it actually creates a cool idea. If you're clever, you make your landing board. So you put that front leg just a little bit further out. So you've got a little landing board, so then that gives them a little bit of an airport. Hopefully, hopefully there's no friggin', uh, what do they call that when there's a friggin' air, air tra traffic? No, anyway, hopefully it helps them out. So it's a good idea to give them a landing area. Oh, I reckon the queen's hatched out in here. Oh, really? really? I reckon because um, well, she's about to come out. I don't know, she's, is she still moving there? Here she comes. She here? Yep. She's a little virgin. There you go, the birth of a virgin. Queen, that is. <laughs> so that's before she gets mated. She's just she's got her, all her organs going, but until she goes on a mating flight, she um, won't fill up her ovaries, which is when she's got a really big long tail, is because she's got all her eggs and um, the semen from her mating flight. And that's so. Hopefully, hopefully she has a successful flight, finds a good couple of fellas, comes back and makes a lovely nest. Anyway, so I reckon that was pretty cool. We got the ladies here reasonably safe. I don't think any of us got a bee sting this morning, so that's pretty bloody epic. Put me boards back in my container where I can store them up. And um, yeah, hey, how cool was that? We actually caught a queen coming out of her. Like, we've timed that perfectly. I tell you what, the things we do to organize so you Bush Bee Man viewers can see shit happen, you never know. And what's more, all you Patreon supporters out there, you make it happen too. So keep up the good work.